So I'm up first, and I'm gonna go to the gym. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're cleverly a natural born leader. You gain plus two charm. After all that, you decide to look for a spot outside the school where to get some good sunbathing. But you fail to focus on your sunbathing since you see Scott and Miranda deep in conversation. It's a sports game thing, Miranda. I think I'm a good boy, but there's something that just gets me growling when I see the opposing team. Oh, Scott, believe me, I understand better than you may think. It's exactly how I feel about those horrendous air people. Air people? Yes, Scott, obviously, the air people. I know I've told you about them before. They're the sworn enemy of the Mer people, and they must all be destroyed if they refuse to accept our superiority. Oh wow, all of them? That sounds really hard. It will be. They're a horrible, ruthless nation of feathery socialists who refuse to bend a knee like no matter <laughs> how many <laughs> times my father invades. Yeah, she's fun and genocidal. They don't <laughs> like guacamole, Scott. <laughs> they eat the crusts of their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They wear socks with sandals! <laughs> socks with sandals? And fanny packs! Oh man, that's pretty God, scary. it sounds- it sounds like they're just describing Germans. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh god. <sighs> What are the mere people going to do about it? That's a great question, Scott. We've tried reasoning with them through bombs, chemical warfare, and torture, but they're entirely unreceptive. <laughs> oh my. That didn't make the Actual case any better. <laughs> hmm, it's really weird that they wouldn't sway the air people, but maybe you can step in and help. Scott and Miranda probably have different takes on what the best strategy would be, so think hard about your pitch. Reach a truce, use your great cheerleading skills to put an end to this feud, wipe them out. Make the Air Kingdom the Mer wait, make the Air Kingdom the Mer Kingdom by flooding the entire sky. Okay, well I'm not going for her, so I'm gonna choose the first one. Oh no! That was the one for her. Oh dear. What? Yeah, oh wait, never mind. I'm confused now. Yes, your genius cheerleading is always the answer. Okay, good, that is his answer. Scott, as much as I appreciate you, peace isn't the answer with those hideous air people. <laughs> peace was never an option. No. <laughs> also, how do you two plan to put an end to a feud that has existed for centuries just by cheerleading? Hello. Hello. Welcome back, Athens. Like this. One, two, three, four. Hey, air people, just end this war. Five, six, seven, eight. Reaching peace would be really great. Oh my god, he's oh my so god, cute. That is, that is... 9, 10, 12, 13, remember to always use sunscreen. What? <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> you decide not to point out that he forgot 11. Just missing one number is quite good by lovely Scott's standards. Scott, this is useless. Trying to negotiate with the air people was never an option. But then a slip of paper falls from the sky. Miranda picks it up and reads it. Dear Scott, I really liked your cheerleading. Keep being this cheerful, sincerely, the sun. Hooray! What? Sun? <laughs> I don't what? know, man. This has nothing to do with our feud, Scott. I guess I should seek war advice from someone else. Have a nice day. She might be right, but I won't ever stop cheerleading. Thanks, Veronica. Thanks, sun. Hooray! But then you spot something. Good one, Polly. He totally thinks he's friends with the sun now. We can mess with his head big time. Right? I, uh, also I didn't want the big guy to feel like his cheerleading was useless. As annoying as it can be, sometimes he doesn't deserve to be sad. You know what? I agree. Oh, it was Vera and Polly once again messing with people's heads, but you know what? Scott is happy and he thinks that your idea worked, so good enough. You gain plus two fun and plus one creativity. All right. Keep. Hey, where do you want to go? There's the auditorium, the class, the library, outdoors, and bathrooms. Uh, let's go to the auditorium. That day while rehearsing for the class play, uh, uh, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. 
Your performance what? isn't. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that actually what it said? I didn't That's exactly think. what it said. I'm oh reading this God. word for word here. Oh my god, okay. Your Jeez. performance was intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. Nice. You spot Vera and Polly discussing something. You've got to get in on this conversation. It's bound to be something nasty. Hi. Hey, 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 okay. hey, hey! What? Are you going to that gym? Not now. <laughs> 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 Are you going to that party tonight at Dale's Mummy's Crypt? The dog star has aligned with Venus or something to his parents, uh, so his parents are being are beings of pure energy for the weekend. He's got the place entirely to himself. I might stop by. Yay! Okay, so listen, Scott's gonna be there too. I totally want to spike his drink. Now I'm interested. What are you thinking? Laxatives or Viagra? Gross. I was thinking something fun, like shrooms. Shrooms won't even dissolve in his drink, you idiot. You there, back me up on this. What do you think we should put in his drink? Yeah, make it something fun, like shrooms. Okay, so moon root, it induces werewolf, oh yeah, it induces werewolf transformations. He'll be a literal party animal. Do you want to make him a laughing stock? Use that flower that makes a person fall in love with the first thing they see. We can make him fall in love with a chair or a houseplant. Uh, the moon road. Ugh. What? Don't you know anything about animals? How Dogs is it not cats... her option? I don't know. Dogs and cats always bark when ghosts and witcher... witches are around. We won't be able to shut him up all night. His constant discordant howling is totally gonna clash with the DJ's constant discordant howling. If you like dogs so much, why don't you plan your own party? At the kennel. Jesus. Have some respect for the DJ and his very serious adult career. You lose minus two charm and one and minus one smarts. Um, what? Sure. I don't know, man. Where do you want to go, Saturn? Classroom, library, outdoors, or bathrooms? Um, outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. You notice Miranda trying to put a smile on Liam's face. This should be good. I simply do not understand how you can be so gloomy all the time when the world is so full of wonder and magic. Heh. I guess I'm not part of the everything is beautiful club the everything is beautiful club is that a secret club what oh yeah totally i want to join i want to join how how can i join liam seems totally sexily disinterested in continuing this gag but you have no such reservations you tell her you're in luck i just happened to be uh, to have a membership paperwork right here magic is real oh it's super easy to join all you have to do is eat a bunch of cotton candy and crap out a unicorn simpleton first one charming you hand miranda some membership forms you whipped up on photoshop they're totally fake but she's loving it miranda fills out the forms and skips off to mail them to one two three four fairy dust lane aren't you worried about what will happen when she finds out that you made this whole thing up you are, kind of, but when you run into Miranda later that week, she's super excited. It worked! The Everything is Beautiful Club accepted my application. They said I'm the first applicant they've had in centuries. Recruiting is hard when you're a super secret club. They even gave me fun glittery stickers to put over ugly things to make them beautiful. But I haven't used any of them, you know why? Because everything is beautiful! Miranda lets you borrow some of her stickers. You're pretty sure that you can find some ugly people to stick them on to. You gain plus two fun in one charm. So you're doing good with her so far. And yeah. him is sucking. <laughs> I didn't put... <laughs> I'm gonna leave. No! Come on. Everybody choose an object. Say your object out loud and before I click. So pick an object. It can be anything. Um... Okay. Mirror. Uh, chair. I'm gonna pick needle. 
Uh, genius is used to be found on on lamps. Player order is decided based on how likely it would be to find a 21st century genie. Oh, genies. Inside the selected object. I'd say Saturn. Because I, yeah. I, I'd say a genie would be found in a mirror before it'd be found in a chair or a needle. Yeah. Yay! So you go first. I think a chair is Probably the Probably second best one. Than any. Yeah. <laughs> the genie of heroin addiction. Um, sure. Okay, so now we have a bunch of tables and stuff, so you can sit somewhere for lunch. So, the girl that you like is over here, but there's also this cat person who sells things, and this weird interdimensional space prince, if you want to sit with him. Um, I guess sit with the pink haired mermaid girl? I don't know. All right. All right, I'm trying to comprehend your request. What is there to comprehend? It's really simple, Miranda. Take my cell phone, snap a pic of me face planting in my food with my eyes closed and my tongue out. But where for? Right here, Miranda. You're about to point out that wherefore means why, but luckily Polly elaborates on her own, so you don't have to look like a fucking know-it-all. It's a new meme, Miranda, like planking or dabbing. It's called food poisoning, and it's dope as fuck. Don't you have cool trends in your kingdom? Hmm, I suppose we do. Oh, we have a fun trend called Revere Your Rulers. It's where you show nothing but the utmost devotion for the royal family. If you're good at it, you get a lot of likes on social media, and also not executed. Do you ever listen to yourself when you Sounds speak? Sounds like she's from Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Mermaid Russia. <laughs> Atlantic is like Atlantis or whatever is Russia. <laughs> Federation of Atlantis. <laughs> Yikes. I bet you know some pretty cool trends, don't you, Green? Heck yeah, you do, don't you? I surely do. It's entitled Silverware Wear, and it's where you take your most expensive cutlery and dress it in very fancy tiny outfits. Yep, it's called dyeing. <laughs> I feel like the first one... That's the one you want? Yeah. Not because it's what I'd actually say, but what... What she'd like. like the be better option, yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? How have I not heard of this trend before? Beautiful silverware and fancy dresses are two of my biggest passions. This trend sounds like it was invented for me. Um, it may have been by you on the spot, but there's no need to go into that. What's your favorite <laughs> meme? Spiked salad forks in velvet evening gowns? Seahorse steak knives in frilly skirts? Teaspoons and tea dresses? This trend is... no words. Yes, the glory of the spectacular combination would leave me speechless as well, were I not so excited to create more memes with green. We'll have to meet up soon. Bring all of your most exquisite chopsticks. I shall bring doll clothes in which to dress them. Yeah, totally. Hanging out with Miranda sounds amazing. Um, guess it's time to go out and try to find some exquisite chopsticks. All right. All right, Hammer, you want to sit? Except with the one that sells things. Hey, last night I read this article on how money causes pocket cancer in the long run. You don't want to get pocket cancer. Quick, give me that dangerous money you have in your still healthy pockets. Okay, what do we got? Alright, so, you have seven dollars. Um, okay. we got some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. Remember these used to be cool, now they aren't. But they're so ridiculous that they're still fun in their own twisted way. Uh, a Russian novel with an insightful <laughs> approach to universal matters such as love and death. Are you sure about this? You can always use Wikipedia to get the general idea, but still be able to act as if you've read it. A uh, PR agent. High school social life is so hard nowadays that hiring a PR agent is totally a thing. Okay. A motivational poster, which has Bob Ross on it. Crafting your art requires years of hard work, education from great mentors, and tons of raw talent. But damn, that sounds exhausting. So let's settle for a motivational poster for now, okay? Um, ooh. A blanket with two holes. Literally just a white blanket with two eye holes in it. 
You'd have to be an idiot to mistake it for a ghost costume, but most of our classmates are idiots. There is a corpse? Yeah, I'm selling a corpse. It's like some kind of fashion accessory. It is not as if I'm trying to dispose of it. A sexy fake Latin accent? Why? The hottest thing is being yourself, honey, but a Latin accent is a close second, to be honest. And a fake badass tattoo. It has flames and a skull and even a knife. With this, you can murder your enemies, go to prison and make everyone your bitch, and then murder them too. And go to some kind of super prison called uh, Street Cred Plus 9000. Hmm. I think between, I think what the girl, a ghost girl would like the most is either the glasses or the snake tattoo. But let's go with the corpse. <laughs> you want to buy the corpse? <laughs> yes. Straight to the left field. All right, let's buy a corpse. You know what? All profits made are donated to a good cause. Spoiler alert, the good cause is buying me a new phone. Sweet! Let's Congrats, go. you own a corpse. Oh, I'm like I've always dreamed. I'm gonna go here. You approach Lyra and, uh, Liam and Vera at their table, but before you can sit down, Vera holds up a hand. Pathetic. Stop. This is the cool people table where only cool people are allowed. Oh, so I would agree with Vera, with what Vera just said, but agreeing is something only uncool people do. Wouldn't you agree, Vera? <sighs> nice try, Liam, but I think we're getting away from the point. This interloper still wants to sit with us. Well, if she wants to sit with us, then she's going to have to prove how she is as cool as we are. But without, like, trying to prove it. Trying is so uncool. So, what's it going to be? Well, I guess I'll be going then, because there's no way anyone could ever be as cool as Liam. Let me ask you this. Would an uncool person be giving Vera 50 monster dollars right now? I tried this one before, so let's try this one. Okay, you're cool. What? Money can't buy coolness. Really? Let me consult my list of things money can buy. Let's see. Or, organs, obedience, and there it is, coolness. Why is <coughs> coolness in the O section of your list? Because it's not a real list, I pretended there was a list in order to fuck with you. <laughs> okay, that's you pretty cool. Speaking of cool, while I can't currently accept cash for campaign finance reasons, I will remember this favorably in the future. Oh. Perhaps I'll call bad. on you later for other favors. You hope those favors are sexual in nature, but you don't say that because that is not a cool thing to say. Everybody choose a celebrity. That's it, just choose a celebrity. Uh, uh, I'm picking Daniel Benedict Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. I'm picking Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, Johnny Depp. Player order is decided based on how likely it would be for the selected celebrity to leave a group during a zombie apocalypse. Johnny Depp, Johnny absolutely. Depp. Bruh, yeah. Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who did you say? Uh, I said Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch and then Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. All right, we'll do that then. Hi, Keith. Um. Sure. Okay, where do you want to go, Saturn? And uh, the. the person who's selling things is in the classroom just in case you're interested. Okay, I guess the gym. Jim? Okay. Hi, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Heck. Okay. Match is so intense, both you're into it, decide to raise the stakes. what I do? Uh, by betting part of your charm against part of the other team leader's charm. Aw, uh, why? The commitment amazes your whole team and their spirit is fueled by your determination. Finally, you win and take plus two charm from the other team's leader. Damn, I'm charming. She's... I'm charming as fuck. <laughs> yeah, look at you with your ten charm. She's now a bit less fabulous. <laughs> you spent the last half hour arguing with Liam about which celebrities are in paleo diets, and he's about to put an end to it. Okay. Oh, no. This is going nowhere. Let Wikipedia be our judge. Hey, Damien, lend me your phone. I need to check something. Hey! What's this? Most fabulous pixie hairstyles for the spring-summer season? Ah! Oh, Damien is checking out fabulous hairstyles? Let me see. That's so sweet. We want to see. Ah! Okay, it's clear Damien is losing his shit over this. You feel kind of responsible, so the least thing you- The least you can do is handle some of the damage control by stopping Miranda and Polly from seeing his phone, too. 
divert their attention by making money rain, and turn Damien's phone into a bird. Um, <laughs> let's turn his phone into a bird. That's clearly the only option. Oh, obviously. Before anyone else can check Damien's phone, you improvise a spell. Your magic skills are on point, and the phone is surrounded by a very magical and very orange cloud. Then, there is no more phone, and instead a majestic ho hopo bird emerges. Hopo? A hopo bird emerges from Damien's hand. Wh what? Look, Miri, a bird! Eee! Air people attack! Oh, I forgot about the air people. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> uh, wait, Miri, it's just a bird! Not all birds are trying to assassinate you! What a great spell, Green, and I totally get your statement. Nowadays, we're way too addicted to our phones. We should get addicted to something better than phones, like birds. If you'll excuse me, I'm leaving to turn some phones into birds. People will thank me later. Oh, Thanks. No. You're so Sounds thanks. like you've caused something terrible. You didn't lose anything from that. <laughs> hey. No, you <laughs> <laughs> You're still a bit more creative by the whole fabulous hairstyles thing, but for now you gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Told you there was only one answer for that. <laughs> uh, ooh, I've got seven money. Let's hey, go. Stranger. Ah, you missed me and my shit, huh? Worry no more. All this shit can be yours if you have the money. Not me, though. Is that a I tampon? Okay, so this is a bloody tampon, a tampon used by the former prom queen. You know, for good old blood rituals or in case you're just a creep with unhealthy obsessions. Don't even dare ask me how I got this. And then the things I am too poor for are a penguin mask. You want this, you sick pervert? I had no idea you appreciated a good old reverse Romanian Wilkinson. I must admit, it's kind of hot what that you're into this kinky shit. I don't know, man. Also, there's just a regular bag of cocaine. <laughs> Good old cocaine! In these times of weird experimental substances with horrible side effects, cocaine has become the vanilla of drugs. I'm, I'm gonna buy this one because it's funny. Later, Gator. All right. All right, Ham. Where are you at? Outdoors. You're dabbing. Jesus. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> that day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You're talking to Juan, the small magical Latino cat, when he tells you that you won't ever be as fun as Bob the Scary Clown. You accept the challenge, you go straight to Bob, stab him several times, opening, open his bleeding chest, and eat some of his guts in order to consume his fun. What the fuck?! Really? Do you think that's how this works? Well, it is! You gain plus two fun from poor Bob. Well, that happened. Later that night, you're out bar hopping with two hip monsters, oh, the two hippest monsters you know, Liam and Polly. The evening comes to a grinding halt when you're denied admission to Club Club, thus named for the giant club carried by the bouncer. Who is currently denying your entry? Not fun enough, How... aren't I? What? I said I'm not fun enough, aren't I? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, you've got a six in fun. It's not terrible. How unsatisfactory. My modus op Parande is to be the investigator of exclusivity, not the victim of it. Don't worry, I got this. Hey there, handsome. Interested in some hot ghoul on ghoul action? The bouncer snorts. I can see right through you, Casparina. Move along. Ugh! Who does that douchebag think he is keeping us out of the club like it's his job or something? Both Polly and Liam look to you expectantly. Now is your chance to save the night. Inside a revolution, a proletar what? proletariat proletariat will own the means of inebriation, start a better party right here, a naked party. <laughs> Gotta go with the naked party. <laughs> so fun. You take off your shirt and begin swinging it above your head, making siren noises like a sexy ambulance. Immediately the crowd's attention is captivated. You dance the dance of the uninhibited, moving with grace and elegance of a coked-up giraffe. The crowd follows your lead. Ghosts and ghouls alike slip out of their skirts and skinny jeans. Mummies unravel their ba their bandages. Lewd. Yep. While the pe when the people inside Club Club see what they're missing, they flood to join you in your naked rave. In the morning, over an epic hangover breakfast, you reminisce about last night's triumphs. What a surprisingly pleasant turn of events, and a rare opportunity to work on my moon tan. I think my favorite part was when we literally fucked the police. Best night ever. 
Yeah, it was. You sure showed everyone the power of self-confidence, team spirit, and giving no fucks. You gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. Alright. And then something happened to Hamiel. Me!